Hello everybody, good morning, how are you? Um, somebody asked me this question, what is, the, what is the difference between formalin and pine oil? I don't want to start typing on YouTube, it's too long. I, let me just say it, okay? Because what I'm answering immediately is because the person, I believe, wants to use it as a preservative. They were, they were asking the question under liquid soap. And you know, at times when you make your liquid soap, you use pine oil as a preservative also, especially if you're making it for multipurpose or you're using making it for hand wash, okay? So I want to answer immediately because maybe the person needs that information urgently, okay? I am busy. I'm preparing for this and profit in, in bars of making. And then I'm, I'll be teaching two methods the semi hot process and the hot process i'm already done with the video of the hot process i want to start with the semi hot process we'll be starting today okay and if you've not joined it's something you need to join i made it super cheap and affordable for everybody all of us are so makers we are in this business together we need ways to be able to we need ways to be able to make it affordable enough for us to make and sell for our customers and in it, I'll be teaching about the advantages and the disadvantages. How you should do it, how you should not do it. What kind of soap you should use it for and what kind of soap you should not use it for. Okay? We have other classes too. Not just this profit in soap making. We have our main soap making formulation class. Cream class, pro mixing class. Different detergent, different classes. We have our six courses in all in all for now. Okay? So please do well to join. And then we also sell cutters. We sell cutters. In short, for those of you that are scared that maybe we are scammers, God forbid, it is not our portion. I cannot scam. People from the internet alone that know my house, my personal house, some of them know me close to my special level. I will not say they know to my, they know close to my special level. They are up to 10 from the internet. I will sit down like this. Somebody will just call me. Hello, I'm in Kaduna. Where are you? Will I tell the person to go back? Somebody will come. I will not even know what to do. I should send this person away. I should people that know my house from my training group alone. So with this kind of thing, where do I want to run to? They know where I'm staying. They know my main house. They know where I'm working. Where do I want to run to? Then I will sit down. Somebody will just send money. Somebody I do not even know. I, and even to today, I do not know. I've never seen them. I only know them by our conversations and maybe the name they gave me. The person will just send me money. I see 100 plus. Make cutter for me. Buy this for me. Buy that for me. That's how you see me in the market. Going up and down, buy things for people. I don't know them. And at times, I will never ask for transfer money. Most of the time, I hardly buy ask for transfer money. If you see me ask you for transfer money, the things you're asking me to buy are hazy. I will need wheelbarrow or I will need help. But if not, I will not even ask. These are people that do not know me. And I'll do everything and I'll send. Then some of you that know me that are my subscribers or some of you that know me from Facebook or from somewhere, you still be doubting. Eh? But who, how do I want to scam? How will I do it? Even if I want to. Which is not even in my character. Ah, but please, if you want to buy something, feel free. You can do business with us. Not because there are people that buy rappers. People send me to buy perfume. In short, some of the things people send me to buy, I do not even post it on YouTube because the videos in my phone are so much that some get lost. Or at times, I have to delete them to create space for, for other things. So please, we are very, very legit and we are very, very honest. So even even onions so or anything you want to buy. Except, but let me know before you tell me to go and buy something that... So far as it is something I can do for you, I will do for you. But if it's something I cannot do, I will let you know. If you see you have issue with us, maybe you too you have problem. But if not, we are not like that. Okay? So now, pine oil is gotten from the pine tree. It is an essential oil. You know, most people now are beginning to understand the need of going green. The need of going natural. Okay? So pine oil is cut from the pine tree. It is also known as topetane. 
I don't think I've got the spelling, the pronunciation correctly, but well, that's just it, okay? But usually let's just take it as the normal pine oil that we know. That's the most common name it is known as, okay? So it is distilled from the pine tree and it is a very good essential oil. And just as any other essential oil, you use them with caution. Okay, most essential oils, you don't just use them anyhow. That's why they are even chemicals, but most so essential oils. Okay, so yes, pine oil is gotten from the pine tree. It is from a natural source. So the pine oil is gotten from the needles of the pine tree. Okay, it has been used for centuries as medicine, disinfectant. They use it in woodwork. They use it in carpentry. They use it in textiles. They use it in paint industries. It's, it's, it is a very versatile and, and essential oil. Okay, so this pine oil has a strong scent. And as such, it is used in a lot of disinfectants like the tall, like salt. It is also used in room fresheners and diffusers. Okay, so it's very, very versatile. In skin care, it is good for as a disinfectant. That's why you find it in some of these disinfectants, as I mentioned earlier, like our pine oil and Lysol. Okay, but usually use it for minor cuts and injuries. Okay, it has antimicrobial properties. Okay, but not as strong, but it's okay. It has antimicrobial property. It has anti-inflammatory properties. Okay, and can be used for things as acne asthmas psoriasis you know things like that just our normal our skin ailments okay well then on the other side um formalin is gotten from formaldehyde mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when formaldehyde is uh, diluted with a bit of water you get formal formalin formalin is a strong disinfectant it's, a, it's stronger than pine oil okay Even from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, okay? It is naturally occurring and is found in every living thing, from plant to animal to humans. In short, we human beings produce formaldehyde every day, every time. It is part of in the normal process of our metabolic, it is part of our metabolic process. Let me just put it that way. You know, our metabolic process, we have catabolism and anabolism, isn't it so? So formaldehyde is a natural product of this, our metabolism. So formaldehyde is naturally occurring everywhere from natural things, from nature, okay? It is also a versatile compound. It is used in many products like um, particle boards, some raisins, some coatings, okay? In its, um, in its natural form, it easily polymerizes into para formaldehyde. So that's why it's usually uh, stored in its uh, liquid form. It, in its, if not, naturally is gaseous with a pungent smell. Okay. But Kaskia, it's used a lot, and especially in uh, funeral homes and installing animal specimens. But generally stronger than pine oil, okay? Even though both of them are natural, okay? So formaldehyde comes in different forms. It comes in a gaseous form. It comes as a white solid. It comes in a solid form, okay? As a white solid, okay? As a white solid that is um, insoluble in most compounds, Okay? So for you to be able to get your formal, formalin from your formaldehyde, I believe, because we use it in the lab also, I believe it's uh, your formaldehyde 40% with water, 60%, giving it 100% AD. That, that is what we give you formalin. Although most of the time we buy it, at times diluted. At times you have to stabilize it by adding methanol to it. At times come out, we work with it by adding some amount of, uh, I think, 40% sodium hydroxide. 40% sodium hydroxide, yes. Usually when we want to use it in a, what do they call this? This uh, titration. All this titration, okay? 
So basically, what I'll tell you about formaldehyde and pine oil is that both of them are disinfectants. Both of them have similar antibacterial properties. One is stronger than the other. Okay. Pine oil is gotten from trees. Formaldehyde is gotten naturally also. So as I said, both of them are strong disinfectants. But formalin kills most and almost all bacteria fungi and uh, even when it calls, kills the fungi it kills plus the spores you know spores are very resistant but formalin can kill them it is even used in vaccines they use it in producing vaccines to be able to suppress uh, toxins and you understand to inactivate pathogens and toxins in the in the in the in the uh, 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 vaccines in minute amounts, so before you go and say that they are using plenty for malin, no, it's in minute amounts. They use it, use it in some vaccines. So in short, the uses of formalin are more widespread than that of pine oil. But all of them are natural occurring. Both of them can be used as disinfectants. Okay. So I think I've tried now. I don't know what else to say. Let me go and do other things. Okay. And as usual, sorry for my looks. <laughs>